Oh man, you just gotta love hockey. I'm just an enthusiastic hockey fan, and today I got to talk to two absolute legends of the game. Taco van den Honert and Jamie Dwyer. That's like telling a football fan he can do a podcast with Pele and Ronaldo. Can you imagine? Taco is one of the all-time greatest players, the inventor of the drag flake, and today a member of the Dutch coaching staff. Jamie is a five-time world's best player, a magician on the field and a killer in front of the goal. Both are World Cup winners and Olympic gold medalists. It's a good day for a hockey fan when you get to talk to the both of them. Hope you enjoy a podcast with not one, but two legends of our game. The Euro Hockey Daily Podcast is brought to you by XPS. Plan, prepare, perform and win with XPS by sidelinesports.com. The essential software platform for hockey coaches all over the world. Not just for coaches here at the European Championship, but for all ambitious coaches eager to improve every day. A must-have tool for clubs who want to track the development of their homegrown talents. For more info, check out xps.promo slash hockey. Welcome to the Euro Hockey Daily. We're meeting up with uh, Taco van den Honert, uh, a member of the coaching staff of the Dutch national team, uh, the day after a, uh, for us, very agreeable Germany uh, Netherlands. How did you experience the game last night? Uh, yeah, for us it was a it was, it was a good game for us. We uh, we had uh, some difficult moments in the game. Mm -hmm. We made some mistakes, but. Uh, in the end, we stayed together and we had a, uh, worked for us a very good result. So yeah. we're, uh, we're happy with that. Happy with that, yeah. It's just one step in towards the finals, but uh, it's an important step to win, to win a game versus Germany, of course. Yeah, and uh, yeah, of course. And in a tournament, winning, winning Germany in a pool is always a, kind of a boost for us. So it's, uh, it's always an important game for them Absolutely. too, I think, and for us. Yeah. So it's, uh, it was good. Mm -hmm. um, you yourself, you've won World Cup gold in the iconic Lahore Stadium in Pakistan against Pakistan. Uh, you've won an uh, Olympic gold in Atlanta, uh, which uh, was your last game also for the Dutch Orange team. Uh, meaning you've played in the, the previous century, um, but you're still. <laughs> yeah, sorry, makes me, it makes me sound very old. Yeah, yeah. So I am how, how, how different is it uh, from today's game? Uh, well, t today's game is uh, the, the, the the pace is much higher, mm -hmm. uh, the physical uh, the acquirements are much higher. Uh, and when you see old videos, uh, it's, it's like almost falling asleep. <laughs> uh, I think maybe there were some. Yeah, there, there was more space for individual players. I think for uh -huh. like Shabazz and uh, Stephen Vane and uh, players like that, and, and, and Jamie. Yeah. Uh, well, Jamie played in the in the, in new the modern era also, era also, but he was still a player like uh, great to from watch. The old, and, uh, yeah. From the old era. And yeah. there's still players like that, but I think the whole game is much more, much more physical and more uh, high. It's paced. more about the team and about, not about the individual skills yeah, anymore. Yeah, much more, much more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But also as, as, a, as, as a player at that level, as, as someone who got to travel the world uh, for, for, for his sports, uh, do you experience it's it, it different now? Is, well, I think the team, the, the, the whole team process not really, is not really that different, mm -hmm. I think. Um, uh, you, the, the, the problem is now that in, in my days you played with, with 11, 12 guys. Yeah. And now you play with 16, eight, 18. 16, 18 guys. So you have to make more contact with people to 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 accustom to their play and yeah. to their. So that's that's more difficult. So you need more time, I think, with, uh -huh. with the whole team, which is difficult in Holland. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> but that's that's a that's one of the uh, big differences, I think. The, the more players in the in the field, you keep on changing all the time, um, and and you have to be very fit to to beat in an uh, inter international game. Yeah, that wasn't the case in your time. Well, you have to be fit, and fit. but, but yeah. not, not that fit. Uh, I think we, when we, you, the team was that fit and you played against you, you, nah, you nah. were not able to run nah, now. Nah. How different is it also to play 11 game versus 11 versus 16 game versus 16? Because it doesn't the team process is, isn't that more difficult in your time when you have 11 guys who are almost sure about their plays, maybe one or two who get changed for every game, but you play a, a tie-in game. 
and 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 now it's yeah you're competing with 16 guys and if you're not doing well you, you're taken off immediately and uh yeah well i think maybe now it's it's when you're now with your 16 you're uh, you're sure you're going to play yeah. uh, uh, and i think also most teams have have schedules and most of them play yeah and play a, a, a considerable all, all amount of, yeah considerable amount of time also and I think uh, so. I think that it's difficult more to get accustomed to all the players in your team uh -huh. because today I play with you more than I play with him, and yeah. then that's different the next day. Uh -huh. So I think that's pretty diff more difficult than us because I, I I think I played for like six or seven years with Floris and Bovenland and Mark Dalis uh, 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 yeah. every game, uh -huh. and I know exactly yeah, what was all, all the game. Yeah, all the game. Yeah, so I know what's going to happen most yeah. of the time. And now yeah, you have to be more uh, uh, accustomed to. More yeah. players, yeah. But wasn't the team process more difficult to manage because you had players there who, who didn't almost play. didn't play? Yeah, that, that was that was more difficult. Yeah, there were always every tournament was one or two who were in the or end the, were, you're, you're uh, either were pissed you, you off. You, you they become they a tourist, play. or yeah, you become yeah, a tourist, yeah. or you become pissed off. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, and you know how it goes. Yeah, when the younger yeah. guys play less, and uh, if you're lucky and you're you're free now up, you get you, you have a chance to come in. Yeah. But if it was a difficult match, then the coach would maybe. Well, well, one, yeah. maybe, two, maybe two, and then you, you hope you come in. So, yeah. so that's that's a big difference in that. And and so you have to also had I think coaches were also maybe selecting those days on people who were uh, supportive uh, for the rest of the team on the bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what did you do in life after your final game in Atlanta? Um, well, so the same I did before, actually. But okay. <laughs> yeah. no, during that time, it was it wasn't uh, it was kind of it was getting professional more and more. Uh -huh. But most of us just had a job and yeah. studied and had a job. And uh, after that, I I still played with the Essendon fir first team for two years, and then uh, I played in the second team. And you train once a week, and you yep. play on Sunday. And it, it took me, I think, six or seven years before I started coaching. Okay. After that, so that I worked and I uh, finished my study. I worked and. Um, I played recreational uh, hockey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then, and the good thing about Holland is because of the club system, mm -hmm. that if you drop out of your first team and you you, take still, it easy, you still have good games. Yeah. You still, uh, you can still be stay fit and, and it's enjoyable and it's good. Yeah. Um, if you're not doing hockey, what makes you tick? I'm a computer programmer, uh, and uh, I've, I've been a. computer programmer. When I was a small kid, my dad worked with IBM, and I had all the computers at home, so I. But you're still your former generation. I was addicted. I was pretty yeah, yeah, special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was. I was pretty early with that. Yeah. But uh, I was addicted to hockey and to computers. I think. Okay. And I think I still am. Okay. Yeah. Uh, why your logical mind? Or yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe I, I enjoy still still tinkering with computers and programming, and I love to do that. Mm -hmm. That's. Uh, yeah. It's become a real passion next to hockey as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, al it always was. I think I always did. Always the, the, the always both. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was easier in my time to combine your your other things with hockey, but uh -huh. now it's much more difficult because you know, the guys are hockeying every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you're known also for uh, inventing uh, more or less the drag flick um, when, when the corner rules changed back in your days. Um, today we, we notice that the, the PC defense has become uh, much stronger. Um, we're seeing a drop in the, in the ratio of scoring on, uh, on penalty corners with the classical drag flick. Um, is it time for a new invention, something uh, innovative uh, yeah, you coming up? Yeah, you speak about that. Eh? Yet, uh, uh, yeah, I think you see more and more variations, and it's the runners are getting better and better, mm -hmm. even with sometimes with, uh, with with putting their own life at risk. Sometimes <laughs> I think, but um, uh, so you have to you have to invent stuff to to score penalty corners, and I think it's um, it's always a challenge. And at, um, in my time, uh, uh, well, I just had a, a flick, eh? and after that, I think uh, uh, Tone Seatman really improved the improved palm, improved yeah. the technique. And made it really, really uh, special. And uh, uh, but I started scoring with the with the flick, with the and, flick. Uh, and that was new. So mm -hmm. in the beginning, I, it was going well, well. But I think the last ten years, the defense is getting so good that it's really hard to just score a flick. You can mm -hmm. see it. Mink has an unbelievable good flick, but to score is something different. No, absolutely. So uh, yeah, a new invention. Yeah, or yeah. The rules have changed, of course. Eh? You know, you can, you, when you hit someone high, you get it against you. So you mm -hmm. also have to you have to think about. You see more corners getting low. Yeah. Like Hendricks. So yeah, absolutely. Always, always, low. always low. And it's very effective. So, uh, but still, you have to think about some uh, some other stuff. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, how are you experiencing this uh, European Championship here? Uh, well, it's in my hometown, Antwerp, so it's special for me. Um, it's in a. Uh, a, a small hockey country, but where where hockey has uh, come up, uh, 
spectacularly. Yeah. Um, but it's different from, from yeah, well, Holland, where hockey is always big. Uh, from, from India, from Pakistan, where hockey is always big. Um, how are you experiencing a European Championship in, in a small hockey country? Well, I think it's not that small anymore. Maybe no. the, 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 the numbers are still, but I think uh, I saw the pictures of the, when, they, when they arrived here after being, becoming World Championship, and yeah. it was unbelievable. Impressive. Absolutely. It was, uh, that was something that's... Uh, I don't think you get that many people in Holland when we no, when it's, we, when it's, we would have won. It was almost like a canal parade in the yeah, Amsterdam yeah, for yeah, national yeah. team. So I think it's yeah. uh, really, uh, and I think it's amazing how uh, I remember not to boot, not to boost, but I remember playing Belgium in uh, in Moscow uh, uh, European Cup, and I think we beat them one z- eight zero or something. Okay. Or yeah. And my one World Cup, I played Belgium also, and I we were six zero, I think. Yeah. And but the last now was it seven eight years? Yeah. Really? It's un- unbelievable what what how it's really impressive how Belgium did. Mm-hmm. And I think when uh, you see the games here, the stadium d- yesterday was I think almost full. Almost full. Yeah. yeah. So that was uh, I think it's a great player. Mm-hmm. I'm really enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you compare it to back in your days, you played a, a World Cup in, in, in an iconic Lahore station, stadium. Yeah, that, that you, was you a can't that, no, 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 of course not. But also that stadium is, is also something completely different because I think there were 45,000 people go yeah. in and it was fully packed. And that's, yeah, that's something you never forget that's in your life. Noise. It's, yeah, you can't hear each other. Yeah. And uh, especially there in Pakistan, people were, uh, they were going crazy in yeah. the stands. So that was, that was an unbelievable experience. And uh, I think it's really too bad that Pakistan dropped off because it's for the for the to play for there the and hockey, for the hockey. It's, it's really really disappointing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You you were to, uh, to the World Cup uh, last year in uh, in India, where also the, the, the game is experienced like more more or less what you experienced there in Pakistan. Uh, how special was that? Yeah. The, also, the, uh, you the, beat the, India. You yeah, beat India. India. Yeah, yeah. India. Yeah, yeah. But it's also the the in the stadium when you Pakistan and India when. The, the moment the home team comes almost over the midline, yeah. the whole stadium goes crazy. And yeah. that's something that's really it's so good to experience. It's so good to be there. And uh, uh, yeah, you never forget that. It's good. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the only countries where you have that. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, what are your expectations towards Tokyo? Uh, well, How realistic I, is it to dream of gold? Uh, for us, it's, I think we always should dream of gold yeah. uh, when we're the, 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 the Netherlands uh, hockey team. I think we're, the last couple of years we're getting in the finals and it's getting harder and harder to win. Eh? There, there, of course, people say uh, Holland always wins. Yeah. We used to win, but that's not also when you see the history. It's not, we didn't always win. No. Pakistan, True. India, uh, and we were there and Germany was there for long, and Australia. Yeah. So it's not, a, I think in, in Holland we say it's uh, disappointing if you don't win, but I think... Not I th- always realistic. No, and I think uh, if you see other countries, it's not like they don't train or they don't uh, so that's I think it's always have to be realis- realistic but I think we should dream about it and I think we have a, a definite realistic chance to win ok thank you very much for your time thank you very uh, much hope to see you uh, Saturday in the final uh, hope so too and maybe a ger- ger- uh, uh, Germany Holland or Belgium Holland once again would be great w- okay. both, both would be great thanks thanks <laughs> Okay, um, we're here together with uh, Jamie Dwyer. Quite a surprise to see a uh, Aussie <laughs> in uh, Belgium during the European Championships. What, yeah. are you, what are you doing in uh, this part of the world? Yeah, there's not too ma- many Aussies here, that's for sure. But no, I'm here with my brand, JDH. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's going quite well in in UK and Germany, and uh, trying to get it more and more into Belgium. So yeah. uh, that's why I'm here. Yeah, yeah, I'm promoting my brand, but yeah, that's what I'm doing here. And it's also very nice to see some good quality hockey. I, I love watching hockey. I, I've loved hockey uh-huh. my whole life, so it's, uh, it's a good excuse to come to watch some good hockey. It's killing the two birds with one stone, yeah, that's the true. expression. Uh, yep. Um, I talked earlier today with, uh, with Taco van Hornet, uh, a name uh, you probably know around the world of hockey, is pretty known. And he described you as a, a, a player from the previous era, like himself but who made it into the modern era, when, but which, by which he meant uh, uh, the players who make a difference through their individual qualities, whilst today's is more the team yeah. uh, qualities that make the, the real difference. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about those changes in, uh, in hockey? Uh, yeah, the game has changed a lot, um, mm-hmm. especially when I first started playing in 2001. Um, I grew up watching people like Taco Van der Honnet, Turn to Neuer, sort of the Amazing old dribbling school. Skins yeah, I loved, I loved the way they played and those guys could change a game. Uh-huh. Um, the game 
I think it's, it's impressive to watch now the amount of passing and how fast it is, how quick the ball moves, um, mm -hmm. the quick f free hits. Uh, mm -hmm. So the real changes have made the game, I think, more entertaining from a spectator's point of view. Uh, from a player's point of view, I think it's it's also fun to play this style. Uh -huh. uh, it's just a little bit different. It's yeah. a little bit, it, yeah, it's, Which uh, one did you prefer? Well, you were oh. an individual player. Nah, you're not an, I'm not saying you're not a team player, but yeah. you were a player who uses individual skills yeah. to make a difference. So I still think you can, uh, you can use individual skills if you're yeah. good enough. You just don't yeah. lose the ball, otherwise the coach <laughs> gets a little bit angry. But I think the, the best years were when the self-pass rule came in. Yeah. In 2008, eight nine, I think that came in. and That made a huge difference. It made a big difference. And it made a difference for someone like myself mm -hmm. because I could, I could uh, have more an influence dribbling Absolutely. and getting a free hit and then yeah. going quicker. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Can you tell us, you still follow hockey I suppose, uh, but, but uh, can you tell us what, what is needed for Australia to win gold in uh, Tokyo? Uh, well, they're going really well, yeah. I think. Um, I was really happy with the way they played at the World Cup um, last year and uh -huh. they, they probably, you know, anyone could have won that in the end. Unfortunate loss with the, with the shootouts yeah, against the Dutch. Against yeah, against the Dutch and then I think Belgium won on shootouts right in yep. the final. So. Um, what what they've got at the moment, I think they've got a great team. Uh -huh. uh, they're all fighting for each other. From, it's different from your time. It's different, right? definitely, but they're, they're a good bunch of guys and they uh -huh. all work uh, very hard for each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at the moment the, the, the goalkeeper goalkeepers, there's two of them who are very good and mm -hmm. they'll need to play really well at the Olympics next year. Yeah. Um, and also the penalty corner guys, uh, Blake Govers, Jeremy Haywood. So if you have a good penalty corner attack and defence ratio compared to the rest of the world, yep. uh, it makes a big difference because most of the goals now in uh, in the Olympics and always have been yep. have come from a corner uh -huh. here or corner yep. has made the difference. So overall, I think you know their best player. I think who is the best player in the world at the moment, uh, Jacob Wetton. Mm -hmm. He's playing really good, but he's got a good bunch of guys around him as well. Yep. And yeah, the defence, the goalkeeper, and the two drag flicker guys are. The are the ones who will decide the colour of the medal? I think so, yeah. Okay. Uh, what is needed for the other teams, especially the European teams, to beat Australia <laughs> in Tokyo? Uh, well, besides you know, the same stuff, probably. Everyone's, uh, I mean, the, the, the Belgians are playing very zonal, and if I was coaching, I, I think that I'd look at a different way of attacking a zonal defence because mm -hmm. at the moment people just still go through the same, same whether chair, it's same uh, routines. whether it's man on man or zonal yep. um, so I just think that, that you should adapt a little bit if people are playing a zonal defence yep. uh, Holland I think have, have always had a pretty strong team uh, I think there's a couple of weaknesses there which um, could make might, a difference could, could make a difference yeah mm -hmm. but I like especially their, their strikers I've always loved Cherry Brinkman the way he plays uh, Mark, uh, Miko Prouser is yeah. scoring a lot of goals, um, but yeah, I, I don't want to say too much, otherwise <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll sort of know how to beat Australia or how I think Australia should beat Holland or Belgium. Yeah, I uh, can imagine. Um, how did you prepare the transition from, from a full-time player to, uh, to a new career? Yeah, it was, uh, it was quite hard actually. It's a little bit strange because uh, I started my businesses uh, probably five years years ago and it was uh, I when you were of, still playing yeah when I was still playing and I built them up to a level which I could move straight into once I stopped which was great uh -huh. <coughs> and that was something that I'm very happy I did um, but life after being an athlete is a little bit different because at the the first few months I didn't want to see a hockey stick because yeah. it's not always you know fun you, you see the fun stuff by the playing but as you know and other people know you got to work really hard there's a lot uh, of training involved a lot of training a lot of meetings and it felt like work, I guess, the last couple of years yeah. for me. Um, and then, yeah, once I quit, I didn't want to see a hockey stick. I didn't want to train. Um, but then after a little while, I came back and played in Holland at Bloemendaal. And yeah. that was most the most fun I've ever had uh -huh. um, playing hockey. Liberated. Just so much no, fun. No, no, no more pressure, there, just no having pressure. fun. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, I guess now I still play um, first division in Australia with Eddie Ockett and Tyler Love, all these guys. Oh, still and a decent level. Decent level. And I just... I just go out there and enjoy myself, uh -huh. and I will keep playing hockey for, yeah. for for a long time. Yeah, but you won't be playing the hockey one uh, <coughs> event in Australia, or uh, no, no, I'm no. not playing the hockey one. No, it's a bit, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. That's a bit okay. more professional. <laughs> well, but uh, so the, the transition to your your new career was really prepared during during your playing days, yeah. and uh, that made a difference. Uh, so you know. could start straight away. Yeah, that made a 
big difference, definitely. And I mean, not everyone has that. Some people, um, you know, they get injured and they don't yeah. have anything to go to. So I think it's important that you should have a think about what you want to do and sort of prepare mm -hmm. for the worst just in case something bad happens. Yeah. Uh, thanks for answering your time, Jamie, <laughs> and I uh, hope that you uh, enjoy the European Championships here. Yeah, thank you very much. It's great to be here. Okay. Together in the hotel lobby here with Alexander Henriks uh, from the Belgian Red Lions uh, after his uh, win against England. An important win because it makes sure that you uh, will reach the, the semi-finals. Uh, how did you uh, experience your game? Yeah, like you said, uh, it's really an important win. Uh, the three points are, uh, were important to qualify so we could uh, set something up against Wales and have a, have a good game also. Um, but it was a tough game. It was not like the game against Spain. Uh, Spain was more open, uh, more yeah, more space for us to play, and in the English, uh, they closed everything down. They closed everything down, uh, especially after their game against Wales. They had to come, yeah. uh, and I think they played really a pretty pretty good game. But I think it was also thanks to us because we didn't play our game and we played their game. So uh, coach wasn't happy, or was happy with the win, but not uh, happy with the, the way he played. Yeah, I think uh, I was happy with the with the win, and, and we we got the, the zero. Uh, but yeah, the way we played wasn't that great, mm -hmm. um, but maybe it's good, we can learn a lot about, uh, from this game uh, yeah. to take with us uh, to the semis. Yeah. And as the team's uh, number one drag flicker, are you uh, happier that you scored one out of, well, you scored a two out of two, because the one was a rebound with, mm -hmm. uh, with Tom, uh, and then your second one went in directly, or are you more happy as a defender with the clean sheet? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm happy with both. Uh, like it was like like yesterday, uh, like you said, uh, two out of two and, and a clean sheet. It's 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 the best uh, best thing. Uh, but yeah, I think yeah, especially the second uh, the second goal was really important because uh, yeah, we were like a bit uh, down and with the one zero England was coming. lead, they were coming and they just had to tap one ball in and it was a, a draw. So I think yeah. yeah, the two zero was a bit of a relief for, an for all the one. team. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, experiencing more pressure at the moment? You're on, on the top of the circle and you know that you need that second goal, you need to make the difference now, or it's going to be a, a very tight game, or do you, yeah, every, every corner is a regular corner and just focus um, on what you're doing? Yeah, I just uh, flicked uh, plenty of balls in my life, so I don't think about the pressure, you just think about your technique, and then yeah. if it's a goal, it's a goal, and if the keeper saves it, he saves it. But yeah, you try to do your best, but you don't think about uh, people around or the score sheet or anything about no. it. Uh, I talked earlier today with uh, Taco van der Honert, uh, who is a member of the Dutch coaching staff, but also an uh, iconic player from the past, but uh, and the guy who is claimed for inventing the drag flick. So we talked about uh, the, 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 the changes uh, in, in penalty corners as well. And uh, these days we, we've seen that okay, the drag flick has had enormous success since he started flicking and, and others started improving upon that. But today PC defense has become really important and, and changed a lot uh, of this, this uh, uh, special phase in the game. Uh, and it's making it more difficult now for drag flickers to score. Hence also the reason why you flick low most of the time where a couple of years ago, most of the drag flickers went high. Uh, yeah, it's it's just a choice. Uh, I, I can flick high as well, but yeah, I think yeah, PC defense is really important nowadays. Uh, I think if you have a really good first runner uh, and, a, and a good line stop, then they could close the, the glove side with two of them and the goalie can take more of the stick side. Uh -huh. uh, like we saw against England yesterday, they shifted uh, with their goalie to the glove side to, yeah. to have a bit of the surprise. Uh, they did it twice, I think, with the flick of Pino as well. Uh -huh. um, but Pino, yeah, Pino is Lloyd Lampard, Lloyd Lampard. For, for the Sorry. people Sorry. who don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's not a reason I, I flick low. Uh, you just flick uh, where, where you, just where you, you analyze and you, you see the opportunity and where you feel good, and then it's it's mostly just uh, instinct. Yeah. Do you think there's there's some innovation needed in the drag flick at the moment because of the stronger PC defense that maybe we need? to be even more creative, more variations, or, or uh, I don't know, changing something different again in the, in the uh, attacking it corner? It depends, it's also a bit of a mind game. I think yeah, people uh, innovated already uh, a lot with a lot of uh, 
a lot of phases and uh, variations, uh, tippings, mm -hmm. hooks, bunts, uh, all, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think if you have a good direct flick, uh, you, you sh yeah, it's, it should be the number one to go for a direct flick. And if then, you have the and then, and then to to create more space for the flicker, sometimes go for a variation for the surprise, yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. um, what are your expectations for this uh, European Cup? It's in your hometown. Does uh, it make it special? Yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's really special to play in front of our home crowd. Uh, we saw it already in the two first games. The crowd is really behind us. Uh, the king was there yesterday, so it's also really special. Yeah. When he's uh, cheering for you after you score. <laughs> um, but yeah, the expectations are are pretty high. Uh, I think not from within the team, but from from the Outside. press. They're they're already talking about European champions. But yeah, they they saw us become uh, world champions. I am not <laughs> <laughs> the Belgian press. <laughs> no, they saw us become a world champion. So I think they now expect that we will be European champion as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but f within the team, we just see it game per game, and uh, we're not even focusing now on the semis. We're just focusing on now on the recovery and then on Wales. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, thanks for your time and uh, best of luck in the, in, the, in the rest of this tournament. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Join us again tomorrow for a new episode of the Euro Hockey Daily on your Apple Podcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify or at studiohockey.com. Enjoy your hockey. Bye bye. P.S. Today it's all about the men. We start at half past one with a certain Spain against England. A very important game in men's pool A to decide who will be the one going through to the semi-finals. At quarter past four, quarter to four, sorry, it's Ireland versus Germany. At six o'clock, it's Holland versus Scotland. At half past eight, it's Belgium versus Wales. Enjoy your hockey. <laughs>